Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Walking and Talking with Phoenix. Uh, today we're going to be discussing anchors. And I don't mean the kind that you drop from ships. So, there's a lot of information in this realm. A lot of information that one has to make sense of when going through the daily experience. And we all understand how the brain works, essentially, just the basics of, you know, contrasting information for similarities and differences so that we can learn you know what causes what and you know cause and effect and just and make sense of life otherwise our brains would explode if it didn't limit down the information that is present because there's just too much information so we have to limit it and we do this by contrasting um, the similarities and differences so if I put my hand in a fire when I'm young and I learn that it burns me when I do this in the future, even if it's not the exact same fire, if I put my hand into something that looks like fire, based on what I've seen and learned in the past, I've already, I already know that it's probably going to burn me too. Because, you know, my brain's awesome like that. There's also another way that the, uh, the brain associates information, and it's not always on a physical level, such as if I do this, this is what will physically happen. Uh, there are also emotional associations that we attach to everything and all experience. And that too influences how we view and interact and react uh, with reality as we make of it. And this is where anchors comes in. Anchors, it's a term they use in psychology. And basically it's about the associated emotional responses with various sensory stimuli. So this song that you hear right now, for me, it doesn't really hold too much sway emotionally. It doesn't make me feel anything. Maybe for someone else, it's their special song with their beloved one or something. So when they walk past, totally different experience. Maybe we'll give them that little bit of an extra skip in their step. You know what I mean? And it changes their experience, the way they react and their interaction with reality as they make of it, which is different to how I'd make of it. So that's the idea of an anchor, it's associations you make, whether it be with music and sound, or whether it be with something visual like that little play area over there with the water fountain, which you see kids running through occasionally. Just seeing that kind of makes me feel a little bit happy and bouncy. I've ran in there myself a few times, made a big kid of myself. So there's visual stimulus that has emotional reactions in us and influences. Or so when you smell something, you know? Maybe uh, some girl or guy that you used to have deep feelings for used to sm smell, uh, wear a certain cologne. Or maybe even your father or your mother used to wear a certain perfume or cologne. And when you smell something similar later on in life, you know, you find yourself more attracted to this person or you find yourself feeling more aroused because you've already got all these associated feelings that are developed really strong with this certain scent. So, you know, the sound, the sight, the smell, there's taste. You know, some people, they all don't like drinking or they don't like drinking specific alcohols because maybe one day they hit it way too hard, pushed it to excess and beyond, ended up in the hospital with alcohol poisoning and threw up so much that even smelling and even tasting that same food or drink again, you know, makes them want to hurl, makes them feel sick. Um, and then there's also feeling, you know, certain, certain things that we feel or interactions or gestures that we, you know, when, when people like pat us on the back or something, maybe you'd be at a funeral, you know, and someone pats you on the back and goes, it's all right, buddy, you're going to be fine. And then years later, totally different situation, nothing blew me about it. Someone pats you on the back and says, everything's going to be all right, buddy. And suddenly you find yourself feeling really, really depressed and sad. And you don't know why. Anchors. Because there is a stimulus of one of the five senses, some kind of stimulus that is anchoring you down or triggering a certain associated emotional reaction. And that's all everything is in this life. It's all about association and all of our experience walking down the same path, walking up the same set of stairs, walking past the same store with the same music playing, and it's going to be a totally different interpretation 
It's gonna have a totally different emotional effect and sentimental meaning to each of us individually. So even though it's, it seems like we're all walking the same paths or similar paths, it can't be further from the truth and we're all actually worlds apart because everyone has their own history of associated emotional and mental impressions. So, and this is the, the interesting thing, once you understand how anchors work, you know, you can, you can really make some progress in terms of self-development and moving past traumas. And when I say trauma, I don't mean it necessarily has to be something really fucked up and heavy that screwed you your whole life. Trauma can be something of less severe, like, I don't know, maybe you always called a name back in high school. People used to tease you, maybe they used to call you pizza face, or fatty, or batty, or whatever. Maybe they still do, you know? And every time they, they say this certain word, this trigger word, maybe it's crazy bitch for some people, I know. Then you lose your shit and it just takes you back to this old place. The same feelings start just swelling up out of nowhere. And it's beyond control. So... The more you're aware of how anchors work, the more you can go about changing these associations. For me, one of my, top of the morning, one of my personal uh, anchor words you could say back from high school was weirdo. Whenever someone would say the word weirdo, I'd find myself shrinking, this pang in my heart, and it would feel awful. And then in time, I learned to embrace my uniqueness and my individuality, and it all became fine. It became my strong suit, and I no longer really gave a shit about, you know, what people said. With that said, if somebody still uses that one word, weirdo, bang, just like an anchor, drops me back down, and I still feel a bit of a pang. And I, I kind of clench up a bit and withdraw. And then my mind kicks in, and it reaffirms all the positive associations that I've been doing. And I'm fine, I'm more, I'm more in control than I used to be years ago. So, the point is we all have our anchors. We all have our certain triggers and stimuli that brings us back to some old place for better or worse. And there is a term in psychology called dissolving the anchor, which means if you do have some traumatized experience attached to some kind of triggering stimuli, be it some kind of music, or a smell or a feeling, if someone touches you a certain way, you know, maybe someone hugs you, maybe something really nasty happened to you in your past and it brings back those feelings, which isn't the best. If you know, if, if you're gonna kind of cause problems with bonding with people and connecting, it's probably something you wanna sort out. Um, so you can dissolve the anchors, which means basically to reassociate the, uh, the feelings, different set of feelings to help substitute for and eventually replace the original set. So, you know, if, if for me, if someone, you know, if, if someone calls you, I don't know, uh, an ugly asshole, right? You mean you could just start repeating that phrase to yourself over and over again while watching a comedy, you know what I mean? And while you're laughing, while you're happy. And once, every time you say it, say, I'm actually a beautiful, nice guy. I'm a a nice guy, I'm not an ugly asshole, and eventually, the more you do this, the more you'll find that the word itself, the anchor itself, and the trigger loses its potency and loses its power in exchange for all this other energy you're putting into it and all these other new associations. So, some of these won't happen too quickly. I mean, if you've had something, an anchor that was set in the seas from a very young age, it's been keeping you at bay ever since when someone throws it down. It's not obviously going to be too easy to dissolve that anchor or to lift it up and place it somewhere else. It might take a bit more time associating because there's just so much, you know, it's too much emphasis put, put on there for the, throughout the years, too much experience, too much association. But eventually you can replace that anchor somewhere else, change the way that it grounds you in emotion and change the way it makes you react and how it influences you. And that's the basic idea, really. That's today's food for thought, ladies and gentlemen, is anchors. So, another really interesting thing, I was talking about how everyone's journey down the same path can be totally different and unique to each observer and each journeyer. 
the way that we see the world, quite literally, is, is all based on association. Like I said, you can be in the same room, same music playing, same film on the projector, you know, on, the, on the screen, same company, same food, same smell in the air, and everyone's dancing and high-fiving and hugging. And each and every single party-goer is interpreting all of this data in their own way via association and contrasting, finding you know, similarities and differences. And really the point is, obviously, that each party-goer is having a unique experience, but the point is that really when you're going through reality like I'm going through now, you're not really seeing it for what it is. And you're not really feeling it for what it is. No one is really feeling the same scene in the same way as the person next to them. Ten people go to a party, all the same information is present. All ten of them have a different story of what the party meant to them and how it made them feel. All right, they have totally different outcomes and experiences altogether. And it's because we never really see what's there, but we see what it means to us. We see what we make it mean. All right, meaning's in the making. It's not in the receiving. Meaning is in the making. And most of what we see now is dependent upon everything that we've seen in the past. Most of what we smell now, how it makes us feel, depends on what we smelt in the past. And the same goes for every other sense. Everything you see, it depends on what you've seen as to what it means now. So it's interesting, the more you move forward towards the future end of the spectrum, you're actually really refining your sense of the past and gaining the true flavor, defining the true experience of the overall timeline. You know? The basic point is that there's a lot more past lasting in this one very step right now and that step. Everything I think is happening now, the way I'm interpreting it, it's already outdated and it's, it's based on outdated information, past information. So, I don't know, it really starts making you think about time and experience and about how, you know, how we measure the color of our picture. It's an overall composite picture, pigment by pigment, it all comes together. And uh, maybe at the very end of it, that final sight, that final smell, final taste, touch, you know, sound. Maybe then we'll understand what it all meant in its entirety from beginning to end. Thanks.